Howdy all you out there in YouTubeville. Welcome to the next installment of the Sony J video. Hope you enjoy it. Say goodbye. Hello, hello, hello. That's exactly the kind of introduction I was looking for. Hello, everyone. I love the selection you made, George. Hello, teachers coffee. Uh, people, teachers coffeeans. Welcome to another show uh, with me, George, and our lovely guest. Who is today? Who, George? Um, it's, I think it's a special uh, teacher's coffee show because um, Alexandra Zaparuza that we have um, is a very special guest. I'm going to tell you more about, the, about this in a minute. Uh, before that, you know, I don't know if you have realized, we have reached season 5 episode like, you know, an amazing achievement. Absolutely, yes. Uh, the pandemic goes on in um, the most places uh, in the world. Some of the news that we've been receiving, um, Latin America is in quarantine still. Most of the schools remain closed. In Brazil, the latest news uh, uh, people told me is that some of the schools are about to open. But in Europe, we are all experiencing the second wave of the coronavirus. However, we are trying to get by, we are trying to survive. And, you know, uh, above all, we try to uh, face this um, problem with uh, absolute optimism. And that's exactly the spirit of today's show. It wants to uh, transmit, broadcast um, a spirit of optimism, of positivism. And uh, I think um, our guest will contribute a lot uh, to that. Before I introduce you to Alexandra, um, a few words regarding how this interview was arranged. To tell you the truth, the first time that not I have met, um, I saw Alexandra was in uh, IATF Liverpool in 2019. Uh, she had one of the main plenaries uh, of the conference and uh, to tell you the truth have never heard of her so uh, among the rest of maybe over 1500 people that they were in this uh, auditorium i went to attend her talk on cleal and i must say that um, she got a standing ovation at the end which she fully deserved because it was for the first time that i realized that in front of me I'm not having only a specialist on CLIL. I have heard so many of the specialists of these specialists in my life, which are excellent scientists and they know inside out what they're saying. But this time we had a specialist in front of us who was talking to us straight from the front line of CLIL. She was there, she was practicing it, she was doing it every single day. So that was one of the main reasons why I asked her a few weeks ago to come to talk to Teachers Coffee. And she's with us right now from Toruni. Oh, Alexandra. Hello, hello. Uh, yes, Toruni. Toruni is the name of my city. Um, thank you for this brilliant introduction. Um, and thank you for... 19 old good days when face-to-face -face conferences uh, could take place um, I also love the the way you introduce it that you know we are trying to take this pandemic with absolute optimism uh, and here in Poland we are just facing uh, tighter measures um, as the new cases are skyrocketing so hopefully when we go through that we will be able to meet face to face once again in conferences like um, Liverpool 219. Absolutely, absolutely, Alexandra. That's the point. Natasha, you were about to say something. Sorry. 
No, I wasn't about to say something. I was very glad to have Alexandra here, and uh, I I believe that I no, I was not uh, in Liverpool then, but I believe that I've heard about everything that was discussed back then. So I'm really eager to listen to Alexandra live in our, on our Teachers Coffee podcast, and I'm very happy to to finally be able to to talk to you, Alexandra. Welcome from me. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, Okay, so uh, I would like to start really uh, with the name of my city, Toruń. Uh, it's in northern Poland. Um, Alexander, if it, I'm not mistaken, is that the Copernicus was yes, born? Yes, yes, and absolutely true. Um, I'm, I kind of imagine that not many people have heard the name of the city, but I guess that most of people have heard of Nicolas Copernicus, astronomer. He was born here. And actually, I like starting my clear talks mentioning him uh, because we are sure he spoke two languages, but we, ex uh, we, we suppose he spoke four. The thing is that uh, we've got some written documents in German, we've got written documents in Latin, uh, but we guess that we, he must have uh, spoken Italian because he, sp uh, he spent 10 years in Italy and he must have spoken Polish because the, the city itself was bilingual then. So a multilingual person. And of course, we uh, we can uh, imagine that that people didn't know how uh, learning languages works how brain works in that kind of situation but uh, he had to learn latin and that was the language of education so although we don't talk about clear back then in the medieval ages uh, but the fact that uh, uh, school students university students had to learn content Subjects, school subjects through a language that is not native to them it's not a new thing uh, of course today we've got a different approach we use this content and language in a learning methodology um, but CLIL is uh, here to stay I hope and what I'm really happy to see is more and more uh, language teachers interested in introducing more content into their uh, lessons. Um, but then before I move on, I would like also to mention, you know, how I got involved in CLIL. Um, first of all, my, my original profession, my first profession is geography. And I used to teach geography in primary, lower secondary, secondary schools here in Poland. But I also um, I'm a, a language teacher, an English teacher. And for quite a lot, many years, I, I taught those two different school subjects separately until my school started offering bilingual projects, bilingual classes. This is where I got involved. It was, gosh, almost 20 years ago. Um, and now I, I get involved in various CLIL projects uh, that involve writing CLIL materials, uh, but also uh, delivering teacher training, workshops uh, or conference talks like um, Liverpool uh, IATFL. Alexandra, if I can, yeah. if I can ask you, because I'm curious about this. So, if I understood well, uh, you said that you started like a geography teacher. So, does this mean that English was not your major back then, and it became uh, uh, in the way towards CLIL, or you uh, you, you were English at the same time? Yeah, that's that's an interesting story because. Uh, yeah, when I graduated from the from the university, uh, I, I graduated as a geography teacher. But in high school, I had an extended language program. And when I started my career as a teacher, primary school teacher back then, um, there were not enough language teachers. The Poland was going through political changes. Um, the government allowed uh, for other languages to be introduced uh, other than Russian. Russian was obligatory when I was at school. So all of a sudden, the country faced this shortage of uh, French, German, English teachers. So I started teaching uh, and while teaching, I started, you know, getting more and more qualifications until I got my master's. So, so it was a it was a, a journey, uh, but I taught those two subjects uh, separately for quite a while before I joined the, the bilingual program. Um, and that was and really that something. something 
that I was looking forward to because uh, these were two or these are two my loves of my professional life, I would say. So combining them together uh, uh, really, um, you know, brilliant, fantastic for, for me as a person. Well, actually, uh, Khalil does I refer to, you know, to the fact that you can include more than one subject at the same time. And I believe that this is an ideal combination since you, you have a specialization on those two fields. So I guess it was, you, you were really the ideal person to start working on that. Yeah, um, I, I would agree today with that, but back then it was a little bit of a struggle because uh, subject teachers, um, like 20 years ago, uh, they would not very often be convinced to this idea. Language teachers felt a little bit threatened that, you know, why this kind of approach? I think uh, 20 years in, into this kind of way of teaching uh, we are in a bit different situation and there is an agreement that yes uh, uh, bilingual programs have got their special place um, and I would like to use this opportunity to um, kind of invite challenge uh, suggest to, to to more English teachers or language teachers uh, content into their um, language teaching well, that's exactly what I was about to, to tell you, Alexandra, because um, actually, since Khalil is based on content uh, uh, primarily, I mean, we, we tend to focus only on the, on the vocabulary and grammar rules all the time, forgetting everything about how to make the content engaging for the kids. So uh, I know that what, what you're really, I mean, it's absolutely true that uh, English teachers felt threatened in the beginning, uh, but I believe that now content is a key word. Uh, it's everything, uh, everything we do has to be content, uh, has, has to have quality content ac actually. So I think that now we're all moving towards something more engaging that will attract our kids' imagination and creativity and so on. Uh, so yes, um, if you if we actually pay attention to everything that is concerned about CLIL and generally the 21st century skills, content, creativity, imagination and collaboration, all the C's are the, the next hot thing of the future, I think. That's true. Um, but you say another hot thing or another buzzword, CLIL, but I would like as a permanent um, change to how we approach uh, language teaching and language learning. Um, to give you an example of what CLEAR can do, I can tell you um, about teacher training that I delivered like five years ago, probably, um, to a group of teachers of different subjects. And I, an example lesson that I uh, prepared was on chemistry. None of the teachers was a chemistry teacher, but the idea was to put the teachers in a situation that they would be putting their students in, just learning some new content. The lesson was on uh, endothermic and exothermic reactions. And I brought something that is called hand warmer, or hand warmers to the classroom. Uh, this is a gadget where, you know, that contains liquid, a special chemical substance, and you have to activate it and then it turns into uh, a solid and it produces uh, heat. And at the end of the lesson, I ask the question, OK, now we've got this hand warmer. It, 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 you, you cannot longer feel any heat. How to restore it to the former liquid form? And some of the teachers said, boil it. Some of the teachers said, freeze it. And that was a magic moment because I could step back and they got into a hot discussion. Try and convince the others uh, that their reasoning is, is, is correct using the language that was not native to them. And they, you know, you could see that they were in the flow, uh, you know, engaged into this discussion. Uh, just, a, just a magic moment where, where uh, people stop paying attention to uh, vocabulary, grammar, uh, and just, 
you know, discuss the content. Um, this is what would be fantastic to try and achieve a, in, a, in a classroom with the students. With the students. And I must That's say, uh, I must say, there is another incident, another anecdote that actually it's a real. I think it's a real incident that you mentioned in Liverpool, that this time referred to students because. And I always quote you every time I deliver a presentation on CLIL. I think you mounted up an entire lesson on how um, we process denim jeans cloths yeah. and and. Okay, and I, I can still remember back then in Liverpool, you said how engaged the children were because they haven't realized what process go through this pair of jeans that they wear or any other kind of similar clothes. And it was another aha moment for the audience, I guess for you as well. Yeah, actually, um, I, I did do, I did have this lesson with this lower secondary students I remember about uh, t-shirts and about the you know a questionnaire how many uh, of them have you got um, do you know what goes into a pair of jeans do you know uh, how electricity is used um, how about uh, rare metals or, or, or plastics or, or where the cotton comes from uh, and th that was really amazing I remember one of the students so that she probably had at home something like 40 or 50 tops, you know, T-shirts. The question is, do you really need that many? That was a really eye, an eye-opening moment for them. Um, another another lesson that I, uh, I or a language teacher could do is on food miles. This is also something I mentioned in, in Liverpool. And I, I had some feedback from teachers, uh, language teachers saying, oh, I've never heard of that. Yeah, that's an interesting concept. We can we can go and develop uh, a lesson based on that. So so this is what I would um, encourage teachers to do. Uh, Okay, use the course book. I know in many situations you, you've got a course book, we've got course book to follow the material or we, we choose to follow the material from the course book. But it's, it's really interesting to, from time to time at least, to put the course book away, topic from there, but extend it further. Like if we talk about fashion, okay, let's go into this uh, a genes problem okay do we know how genes are, are, are produced or do we know where cotton for t-shirts comes from um, and all the kind of uh, um, environmental issue um, or sustainable development issue connected with that so we can we can use the chorus book as a starting point and then go a little bit further with that Yes, that's true. Um, because, you know, the, what's amazing about uh, this whole situation is the fact that uh, we, okay, you, you, refer, you mentioned the jeans uh, project, which is something that we wear every day. So I guess that most kids, especially teenagers, are, should be really interested in that because it's their everyday piece of clothes. Oh, but what I wanted to mention is that this this connection uh, with uh, the target language as well as the as the the, the, the L one uh, is something that clearly is, is really based on. It connect, it connects everything, all the terms and everything that you have inside your head, and also it it develops the inter intercultural understanding and the so as well because it, it urges you to start thinking about the origin of something where it comes from and not paying attention to the language so much not doing translation all the time i mean when i refer to the target language and the and the mother tongue that i didn't mean that i would do it as a kind of translation but we try to find the connection between everything and somehow magically it all bonds somehow I don't know so uh, th that's what I really like about Clil and I'm very happy that you mentioned the course books uh, because you can actually take pieces from the lessons that they work on and you they can make it their own by presentations by using information that they have found and by specializing finally on something each month let's say for example yeah I, I think I think one of the big suggestions that I would have for for language teachers is is not to limit those content lessons or soft clear lessons or content-based lessons uh, 
to one lesson. Uh, because one, one of the big issues in teaching school subjects other than languages is a sequence of in geography, I, I need to follow a very specific um, sequence of information. Uh, I can uh, be flexible from time to time, but there is a, a you know a, a general uh, flow of information. So, so one of the things that, that uh, language teachers could uh, consider is thinking of a series of lessons three, maybe four, maybe working on a, l a larger project. Um, but um, I would also like to, to mention that actually I, as a subject teacher, I'm also responsible for the language of my subject. And the other way around, you know, I'm as a language teacher, I'm also a content teacher. And actually, I remember a situation when I, you know, I take a, um, a, an intermediate course book uh, back then when we used, you know, lower intermediate, upper intermediate, um, advanced, you know, this kind of uh, terminology to, to name the level of course books. And, you know, I, I opened the, the text and I find information there that I had never heard. And I exactly remember it was about koi, a type of fish from... Uh, far east from 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 um, East Asia, if I remember well, and I remember thinking, "Gosh, I, I had never, I, I've never heard of that. What is this?" Um, I went online to to you know to find more about that uh, type of fish, and you know why is it so special? Um, so I, I I learned something new that was not kind of language itself; it was content. But this kind of text could be a starting point uh, for a lesson on uh, fish biology, for example. Okay, the idea is to kind of extend the, the, what what the course book offers and go one step further. Um, what w one big um, advantage of language teachers is that they are not bound by the curriculum of any specific non-linguistic subject. Uh, if I, as a language teacher, I feel more confident in doing history or doing science or, or doing arts, yeah, I can take my lessons this direction. I can also ask my students, what do you like? Okay, what, what kind of content would you like us to work on? Um, I think that's a very good uh, starting point. Of course, because this kind of also um, cultivate what you are calling sparking curiosity or even develop the social currency of the kids. I mean, uh, when, when they know and find out themselves about this information, it really makes them feel important. I really know about this fish in Asia or I really know about this uh, special food. And these can be great sources of motivation as well. Uh, I mean, for me, if there is something, a challenge regarding Lille, is exactly this, that you can motivate an entire classroom out of nowhere simply by creating this curiosity gap intriguing uh, them, you know, the appetites, of, uh, the natural appetite of the people to find out more about it and deliver a successful lesson. Uh, yeah, this curiosity, this is a really, a really good point. And this reminds me of a, another a story connected with a, a colleague and a friend, uh, a, a, a teacher herself, a language teacher, uh, who as a project for the Ministry of Education here uh, was to prepare modules uh, on different areas of language teaching and CLIL as well. So we got together, I worked on CLIL modules, uh, but part of the project was to record uh, video uh, lessons. So I prepared a lesson on polar regions uh, and then she then reported, you know, she observed the lesson, she recorded the lesson. Um, and the students got so much engaged into the, uh, the, the, the lesson. They, they were to prepare a Venn diagram uh, showing similarities and differences between those two parts. Uh, they, they wouldn't leave the classroom. They said, oh, but we haven't finished. We, we, we just need to, we need to continue. Uh, <laughs> so she, she came really 
uh, a skeptic herself before uh, she phoned me and says oh uh, yeah I saw it it works it was fantastic you know the students got so much involved uh, into this lesson that they, they wouldn't leave the classroom uh, so yeah that that's that's a kind of a small victory <laughs> um, of mine when I can actually um, you know change the point of view of, of, of someone who's been in language education for years and and is a little bit skeptical whether you know clear works or, or you know whether it makes sense or not so yeah it does <laughs> Alexandra, uh, let uh, me yeah. ask you something. Yes, um, because you know, uh, whenever we mention this magical word, which is really trendy, the buzzword you said, which is Clil, uh everyone says, okay, in theory, it sounds perfect, but what about the practical side, the reality that we have to face every day? Uh, so, do you need uh, more time in order to prepare a Clil lesson than uh, you know a traditional one? Yeah, I think it depends who we are talking about because it's teachers who are supposed to teach their uh, geography, history, physics, chemistry in a foreign language uh, through a foreign language. Yeah, preparation time uh, is a key thing. You know, some, some teachers say that they prepare 20 to 80 percent of their materials themselves because they, they, they want to adapt the, the material to their students. Uh, so, yes, uh, but of course, you know, once you go through different processes once and again, then you've got uh, a set of materials, you can, you can become more flexible. I think when it comes to language teachers, the, the, the story is a little bit different uh, because of this uh, flexibility in terms of you know, what content I choose or what content we choose, me and my students. Um, I, I, think, I think even if there is more effort, uh, which there is, um, it's, it's worth doing. It's not only for the students. Uh, it's also for the teachers themselves. It's 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 new. It's exciting. It's you know there is some development in that, um, and and language teachers already have got a repertoire of activities. They they know how to make students talk, and they they know how to help students uh, with and with presentations. Uh, the, the the only thing is to choose this content in a more uh, kind of consistent way, okay? Uh, rather than choosing random content, I can go to a subject teacher that teaches my students. Uh, for example, I don't know, a maths teacher and ask the maths teacher, okay, so what do you do this week? Uh, what are you doing with the students this week? Okay, can I step in and, and, and do something uh, around this topic in my language class. If math is too difficult, okay, how about biology or how about science or, or how about music, um, history of art? Um, yeah, that would be interesting if language classes could also show a connection between what we do in, in, in this class and what the students are doing in subject classes. That's excellent, Alexandra. Uh, final note for today, and where can people find you if they want to find out more about what you do and about CLIL? Um, okay, so you, you can find me on clilmatters.com. This is my website, clilmatters.com. Uh, you can find also CLIL Matters on YouTube. Uh, there are a few uh, animations there. Uh, Find me on uh, Instagram. You can find me on Facebook. Um, so, so if if I interested, if you got interested in Clear, if you've got questions, um, if you want to discuss anything about uh, connected with Clear, just get in touch. Yes, clearmatters.com. And of course, people we should write it uh, down, you know, under yeah. the post, George. Yes, exactly. Exactly. We'll do mm -hmm. it once we finish. And of course, and we must say that people can contact you also for direct teacher training now that uh, we all go online and, you know, that there are no borders anymore. It's all about digital online training. So people can contact you if they want to receive some special training on CLIL. Uh, 
right? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I'm in the process of kind of moving uh, the, the, the training that I would normally deliver face to face onto a Moodle platform. It's a process. It's a little bit painful, but it's 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 going to um, happen pretty soon. You know, there will be material online, but um, it doesn't have to be teacher training. It can be, um, I don't know, suggestions, ideas, um, where to find stuff, how to how to start. Uh, yeah, you can get in touch. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Alexandra. Greedy. Many kisses and hugs to Toruni <laughs> and to Poland. Okay. okay. Thank we you. Wish you all the best. All the best. Yes. Wishing thank you, you all the best as well. <laughs> it thank was lovely much. to listen to you. Thank you. It was a it was a pleasure. Um, yeah, Torun, Copernicus, Clil, get in touch. So, George, I think that uh, the show can go on forever uh, with subjects of that style because it's something that I'm really interested in. I believe that most of the people, when they listen to the word Clil, they go crazy because some years ago when we started talking about Clil, it was very new and most of the people didn't know what it was all about. But now it's really trending. So. I think that we could go on forever. I mean, maybe Alexandra could go on. We, we could have another a show with her, not today. Let's not why tire not? her off. That is why, and I'm sure that there will be many, many inquiries and people asking where they should be able to listen to this show again. So can you remind us about the Mixed Cloud? Yes, uh, 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 not only Mixed Cloud. You can always find the previous shows on ELT Teachers Corner page on Facebook. but. Uh, well, so if you write teachers-corner.co.uk, uh, the famous and uh, lovely Teachers Corner where we upload from a lot of people like Nick, for example, Nick Michelidakis, he has a new uh, column uh, with us and Russell and uh, you all have also written articles. I also upload my articles. So yes, visit Teachers Corner. You will find everything in there. It's like a hub. Uh, it's a home for everything creative and everything innovative concerning ELT. And uh, you will find a section which is called Teacher's Coffee. And if you actually leave your cursor on the on this section, it will take you to the live page of Teacher's Coffee. And uh, if we don't have a live show, you can always listen to very, very nice music. Because it plays 24 seven, 24 hours, seven days a week. So yes, if you want to study, prepare a project or anything, you can just listen to our music. And since, uh, since today's show was about Clil, let's not forget, uh, discover our amazing world and explore our world from Express Publishing to amazing Clil series that can not simply spice up your lessons, uh, they can offer fully integrated, complete Clil lessons to uh, the already existing uh, syllabus. Highly recommend and uh, test it. Uh, and uh, adopted by many, many teachers all over the world. It's a secure choice, let's say, for your clear lessons. Exactly, George. So, um, until next Friday? Until next Friday, where we're going to have our beginning.